Okay, uh, there we are. Hello, everybody. Hey, Sophie. How's everything? <laughs> Thank you. Um, before we start, we just wanted to address the problem of Twitch because obviously it's not what it says. It's not Artemio versus Giri that we're going to do today. But there's a slight problem with the uh, restream, so they don't. It won't take our titles, right? So today on Twitch we are going to be Artemio versus Giri. Maybe if we cut our hair a little, we're just <laughs> close to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I hope everybody can hear us all right. Uh, besides that little problem, we have a new series starting today. And I hope you guys will enjoy it. I know Sophie told me she's very excited about it. She has some suggestions and we are going to address them in the next series. Um, we are going to look at some attacking games and we are going to take uh, different players and we're going to start from, in a chronological order, we're going to start from Morphe today. We're going to see some of his masterpieces and then we're going to move uh, to other players. Uh, please change the board if possible. Uh, what's wrong with the board? Can you not see it? Okay, let me know if there is anything wrong with it. Okay, uh, but Sophie has been playing a tournament and I think she's <laughs> she was very excited about having real chess, no, Sophie? Yeah, it was uh, really fun. Uh, it was quite a tough tournament because there were so many underrated, uh, not kids, but like young, like 18 juniors playing. Mm. Uh, so it was a bit tough, but I think, and then I played my boyfriend in the last round, so that's never fun. Never. Uh, and I lost, <laughs> but uh, I overall think it was a good tournament and I, I won like five rating points or something. So it's, it's okay. It was not a disaster by any means. <laughs> no, of course. And besides a lot, long time no play is always difficult. Yeah, also that. It's good to just get into the habit again. And the tournament you are going to play, you said that one got cancelled? Yeah, everything got cancelled uh, right after we played that tournament. Mm. Uh, the tournament we were supposed to play last weekend, and also there was actually one this weekend coming up now that I wanted to play, but everything has been cancelled uh, due to Corona. So I guess I will have to wait till next year. Next year, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how that goes, no? Um, so, okay, now on the board we have a game. Uh, I see someone asking who plays here. It's black to play. And we're going to start with some tactics and then we're going to look through some whole games. As you know, Morphe is uh, one great attacking player and he has some uh, very, very nice games, some great masterpieces, and we're going to address some of them today. So let's let's start training our tactical vision. <laughs> I don't know, Sophie, if you have any ideas about this position. If you had time to think about it, and actually, had the, I had the board. Uh, ah, you already know so it. <laughs> I thought about taking on the, an e three, an e six, but then I thought maybe it. Um, yeah, I think that would have worked. If, if <laughs> With white, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, but it's black to play. Like this position. I'm. I'm not so sure. Um, just trying to. I mean, if if there's nothing tactical black black can play, then we should cover the threat uh, on e6. Um, but it sounds like there's something tactical. Can play. Yes. Yes. Today we are going to be all tactics all over the board. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's some. Something about the knights, especially the knight on d5, not being so well protected. So if we took an f3, he could not take back with uh, the queen, and he could not take back with the pawn, mm -hmm. because the knight on g5 would be uh, <laughs> we would grab that. But if if we take an f3, and I'm just gonna make some nice arrows, then I'm not so sure if we just take back with the knight, then mm, I don't really see That is the away. question, yes. What happens if they take 
with the night. In the meantime, uh, on Twitch, no, Artemia versus Giri is not right, but uh, there are some problems with the restream, so we couldn't change the title for today and we couldn't find a fix, so we just started uh, with the title that uh, was there. So sorry about that, just uh, ignore it. It's just attacking games today from Paul Morphy that we are going to see. Yeah. And I think Rook D3 looks good after that. Yes. Uh, but I'm just, if, is it possible to play Rook D3 directly or is that not as good because White could then maybe take on E6? It is possible to play Rook D3 uh, directly as well. Uh, I think okay. the outcome is the same. I mean, you're going to get two pieces for the Rook in the end because the Bishop on A3 is always hanging. So that there's that now. He yeah. played rook takes a3. Sorry. He played this way, but we could also look at this rook d3. And if queen e6, then we have to take uh, yeah. knight takes, and we take on a3. No. Ah, uh, yeah. Two pieces for the rook with a very nice endgame as well. Um. But I think he preferred to keep the queens for a while, rook f3 and then uh, rook d3. He got a, a winning position quickly after this, uh, because white played queen b2 to keep the bishop under uh, under good care, keep it protected, and now rook takes f3. And here white played king h1. And okay, here we have many good moves, but there is a, a way that's the best way and leads to a, a winning position very quickly and that's bishop d4. The point is that the queen has to stay and defend the bishop. No? Yeah, and then she's not defending f2. Uh, f2 as well is a problem, but in fact after queen c1 there is something even stronger than rook takes f2. Because you know Morphe. He plays for mate all the time. <laughs> um, the book is hanging on, on F3 now. Right, yes, important. Somehow make a threat that's more serious. I mean, E5 is also hanging, but maybe we could take with uh, Knight takes E5. Mm -hmm. Possibly taking here, taking here, here. Not. Maybe it is. Could he? Be, maybe he could sacrifice this. Matt at Twitch, yes, the stream title is wrong and that's because there is a bug with Restream and we couldn't change the title, so uh, sorry again for that. We are looking, looking at attacking games. Yeah. And I'm reading the <laughs> YouTube chat now. Good. Uh, <laughs> Knight d4. I think this might have been earlier. Rook d3 seems okay. Yeah, I think, I think that's the thing, right, that a lot of moves right now are are more than okay for black. I think so, then... yes, of course. Rook takes f2. Yes. That's what that's also like a good move, but not what Raluca or Morphe wants. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Rook f2 can be played. But uh, here there are some tactics because this bishop on a3 now is kind of hanging. So the idea that he has here is to play rook c3. This is really, it's really a position where you can play anything, I think. Just get the rook. Yeah. I think even rook f7 can be played and if you are doing great. But rook c3, I think, uh, is almost winning on the spot. Because where does the queen go? She needs to protect the bishop, no? Yeah. So queen b2. And this is what he wanted to do here after queen b2. What do you think was his idea? Um, 
queen is is not uh, if we have a good place to put the rook I'm looking at rook, rook somewhere <laughs> yeah rook h3 is what I'm looking at um, okay. because he can't take it he has to move the queen maybe back queen c1 and then then I wanted to take here but I'm <laughs> but then I think he can hide on g1 maybe he can't maybe we give it a check goes back no it's not not feeling it 100 percent i want to make it work but it's okay let's say it goes back okay the idea is already on the youtube chat and and that's is it sorry go to maybe just g3 and then take on g2 next move yes and just open the king and uh, try to mate it no yeah i can yeah rook g2 and this already looks very bad but this was already a, a very good position for black so maybe not the best uh, example from from now on he comfortably won the game so i think we can move on to the next uh, example from from here and that is uh, this one i hope okay and here it's white to play let me just flip the board yes. Hold on. It is going back for no reason. So I'm flipping the board and it's white to play. What do we do in this position? Now I am seeing uh, it from Black's perspective. Oh, I think, I think you have to flip it yourself. Uh, I'm just going to see if it's the right. Uh, it's white to play? Yes. Okay. But I don't think I have the same position that, uh, yeah, maybe, yeah, okay, now I think I have it. Sorry, I'm just trying to compare with what I, what's on the... Okay, good. Okay, so, white to play. White to play here, yes. Why is Paul Morphy? Paul Morphy, with the white pieces. Okay. Okay, uh, YouTube chat is. Do they have it already? Very, yes, <laughs> very oh. sharp today. It's slow today. Let's see what's. Um... I'm looking at taking on b6. I'm looking at taking on e5, uh, but I'm not really getting any very. Mm, getting anywhere very concrete yet mm -hmm. so i might just go look in the chat <laughs> see what they have okay it's a queen trap you know that's one thing i'm not very good at seeing actually i'm not sure if it, somebody says just uh, says it's a queen trap yeah the queen is kind of trapped on e6 bishop h bishop h6 no no yes no? yes <laughs> Should you take an h6 and then knight g5 ah and the queen is trapped after knight g5 yeah well that's nice that's a nice tactic of course black didn't take back he played f6 but uh, all the pieces get in here he played bishop g7 and one thing that uh, he wasn't afraid of is just <laughs> throw the pawns <laughs> Here g4 because he's got so many pieces attacking and black has some problems with the rook. Where is the rook going to go? He's waiting for uh, rook h7 in this position to take on f6. Take on f6 and then knight g5 is going to be an idea. Uh, and that's the same if he if black took on h3? Yes, 
On rook takes h3, he also took on f6. And now he has to take back and knight g5. And at this moment, black has to uh, give up material and hope for uh, some compensation with queen takes g4. Yeah. And play this position. I think there can be some kind of compensation here, knight f3. Because the bishop on g7 uh, has some problems, but we also have the move f3 here, so we're not really losing material. Yep. The knight has no way back. Um, if knight f6, we want to take. And on king g7, we want to take on g4. But still, pawn takes d4, nothing, nothing is easy, no? It's not over yet. No. Uh, but these games are different from what we see today. Uh, they were playing completely different, so here black goes queen d7. Because at first sight, it looks like uh, uh, black is hanging on to the material. The bishop on g7 is hanging. No? If knight h3, for example, uh, they want to take on g7. And keep two pieces for the rook, which wouldn't be bad. But now, he takes on f6. And here, black is uh, completely lost. He goes rook h4 and f3. And there are problems with the king. Pawn takes d4, simply takes, rook h6, and now king g2. He's calmly preparing to, give, uh, to bring the pieces on the h-file, something that we see in many of Murphy's games. He plays with all the pieces. He always tries to include everybody in the attack, which is a very nice principle, very important principle. Just king g2 and rook h1. And how is the king going to defend no? once the queen enters on the h-file? goes here and rook h1. He took on g5, rook h6, and knight h7, hoping to close the h5, but I, g I bring the queen in queen h1. And here starts the fun. Rook h8 and rook takes a8. There's a lot of material already, no? Yeah. Queen h6. And on queen c6, okay, it looks like black wants to give some checks, but we are not in the mood for that. Just rook c1, no, no counterplay. Queen b6, and what do we do here? <laughs> queen Anything, <F8>. no? <laughs> Anything. Uh, yeah, he took on c7. Yeah, okay. That's also uh, pretty, because queen g7 is coming. Yeah. It's this one here, and if the king goes further, then here comes the mate with rook e8. Getting mated in the middle of the board. Yeah. Okay, let's see one more tactic. This we are not get. We haven't gotten yet to the full games that I had prepared. This I hope didn't ruin it for you. It's black to play, so I'm just going to flip the board. Have you flipped the board or should I, I can flip the board? Uh... I think you have to do it yourself because for some reason it won't uh, flip for both of us when I do it. It's flipped now. Um, Black to play, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Here's this something about B4 feeling a little tempting. And also maybe something on the C file. Um, really taking with the bishop. Then pawn takes. Knight takes, hitting the queen. And when the queen moves, then we could put either the Rook or the knight on c2. That looks like we get a lot of, we get two pawns and a lot of attack. Maybe even just even we win the rook, right? Yes. Or at least then we get two pawns and a rook and an attack for two pieces. That should be. That's a lot of uh, compensation there. Well, that's a lot of attack. In fact, bishop takes b4. He played. 
and here is the line that you were discussing and here where does the queen go that's a problem no uh, yeah <laughs> he went to d2 but this allows knight c2 of course is possible uh, and i think you're winning also the knight on b1 in the end no? yeah in this and case b2. yes you um, b2 but rook c2 was played yeah and this in fact traps the queen again knight e3 <laughs> I need to take the bishop. Yeah. No, take, no need to take the bishop, no. So this is maybe a, a queen hunt, but the king is coming next. <laughs> so let's see more. Uh, here we go with white. Now we're going to see this. Flip. This is a very interesting position that we have here. Uh, I'm just curious, how would you continue with white in this position? Because we are already better, we have uh, this incredible development advantage. And black I mean, spaces I'm are a bit awkward. Rook takes e7, looks like it's. <laughs> you are getting like, in uh, Morphe's skin already. Yeah? <laughs> he has to take with the king, otherwise, we win the queen with rook e1. I th or do we? I think we do. Maybe he could then play. Bishop e4, but then we could just take a few times. I think that would be very suicidal still. And when he takes with the king, then I don't know, we have a lot of moves, I think. Maybe putting the other rook on e1 or queen c5. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I really want to take on e7. You really want to take on e7? How yeah. about the, the YouTube and Twitch chats? Uh, okay, uh, John is asking if no more Nimso Indian. No more Nimso Indian for now. No, we have covered that, I think. We've seen uh, enough games. So we're moving to some middle game. Rook e5, uh, queen c4. I guess queen c5 is what's. Mm -hmm what's meant a queen c5 could also be moved i really think it's uh i think we should take an e7 <laughs> of course morphy took on e7 that's why i wanted to show this game because he was always going for the attacks it doesn't mean that rook takes c7 is the most correct way to play here uh, because if you play this slowly with uh, queen c5 for example or rook e5 uh, this should also be really good also a4 oh, yeah. is I wanted to avoid, uh, like, not give him the opportunity of castling. But of course, yeah. if we play c5, he can't castle either. Yes, if queen c5, no castle. Knight b7 might be a problem, though, when you play queen c5 for now. Maybe the knight comes back in. But you could improve on that idea and play a4 first. And the point of a4 is to play queen c5 next. And now you want to take on e7, and the knight on a5 will be hanging. Yeah. And if knight b7, then we take on b4. So this is, of course, very strong. Uh, I thought you would also want to play bishop f5. I felt like this was also a... <laughs> bishop f5? Yes. Uh, that ah, would okay. also be an idea that you would like. Why? There we go. Bishop f5, that's probably also very interesting but he went for rookie seven of course no middle ground here for everybody joining in the twitch channel we cannot change the channel title uh, so of course we'd like to but there is a bug with restream so no we cannot do that sorry king takes e7 and rookie one as you suggested and here black can still hold, but he has to play king f6. Not sure that's really a move that anybody would want to no. play. <laughs> but, <laughs> but this was the move, because king f7 was played, and here... Uh, what do we do after king f7? This allows a few things. Now we take on f5, maybe. Now we take on f5, yes. Now we do take on f5, and here black shouldn't take on f5. Uh, because 
if pawn takes, then the queen gets in, and this is going to be terrible. He played queen yeah. f6, looks logical. And how do we continue the attack? It's still not over. We still need to play well, precisely. No one exchanged queens, uh, that's for sure. So either moving the queen or playing Kind of like the idea about putting the knight in the game on, on g5 or e5? Yes. Maybe that g5. Interesting. Knight e5 or knight g5? That's I think I'm going to go to g5. Not blocking the book. And how do you continue? King g7? Maybe here and king g7. Uh, I see uh, the YouTube chat is also in between 95 and 95. What do you guys think? How about the Twitch chat? Is it ninety five or nine G five? Which one are we going for? <laughs> no help in the Twitch chat. <laughs> no help in the Twitch chat. Uh, I think the the title is a bit confusing still. So <laughs> maybe people were hoping to see something else. So what if we play? If we put the knight here instead, then if he goes to the e file, we'll have a discovered attack winning the queen. So he can't do that. Okay. And also he has to stay protecting the queen, so he will have to go to g7. And then... Maybe we can check here, because he can't go in between with his queen, because uh, our knight on e5 would then be uh covering g6 so he would have to maybe you could just go back no he can't go back because the, our knight is standing there so he would have to go to f8 and then we have knight d7 yes then we have knight d7 that's true okay so i want to put the knight on <laughs> So we're going to go for knight e5. I see that uh, the Twitch chat was going for knight g5. Okay, now uh, Natsel wants to play knight e5. And knight e5 yep. is the move, yes. We are going yeah. to see both because knight g5 uh, also looks good, but you have to calculate and it does not get you where you want. King g7, queen d7, but it's not over yet. King g8. So what, what do we do next? No? Mm. Big question because queen e7, queen g7, sorry, could be an, an idea of defending, for example, if knight e4, queen g7. I look at faint then. Black is bringing some more pieces. Uh, this actually leads to a forced draw, but it's of course not obvious. Here rook e5 is the move. To keep the rook open when we play knight e4. And rook d8, we go here. I'm just going to show the, the line for fun because <laughs> I think it's still difficult to calculate. Uh, when they take on d7, the idea that is that we take on f6 and there's a double attack there, no? Mm. We get the rook. So they cannot take on d7. They can take on e5 though. And then we take here, and king f7, <laughs> it's not over. My queen defends the rook, so queen h8 is not an idea now. And the only thing left to do is queen d7, and here there is a perpetual this way. Okay. With queen f5 and queen g4. And it's only a draw, unfortunately. But knight e5 in this position uh, wins the game. Okay. 
because of the ideas with knight d7 with king f8 this did not happen in the game but we have to see it and if king h6 what is the point yeah, i didn't really look at that because i just thought <laughs> that would not be possible <laughs> um, it is <laughs> What do we do though? Can we do a rook lift? Putting the rook on e3? We can. We definitely can. Rook e3 and it's game over. He tried to do this. King takes and rook g8, but it doesn't matter because rook h3 is still there. Doesn't really matter that our queen is pinned. Nice. Nice attack. Very nice attack. Very tall like, no? <laughs> uh, sacrifice that's that wasn't correct. But it got things complicated. Okay, this was the one that we already saw and then we are going to take a look at this game. This is a a masterpiece, this game. I love it. I hope you're going to enjoy it as well. Here, Morph is black, so let's flip this board. And he played with no uh, odds. No odds, time. yes. <laughs> Morphy played with odds as well. You're going to find many games where he starts without a rook, without a knight, um, because he was the best player of his time and he could take odds and he, he won them <laughs> comfortably. I actually have one game. Hope we, we can see it. Uh, so you see how he played uh, even without a rook. It didn't really matter. It's uh, attacking chess all the way. He also played a lot of gambits, but not in this game. Bishop b5 and bishop c5 play here. Castles, pretty normal opening now, knight e5. And the idea of this knight e5 is to follow up with d4 in case of knight e5. Mm. Uh, for the, the knight and the bishop. And if bishop d6 here, white can take, of course, but he can also try to play with f4. And then e5 and get some some space. He would get the piece back eventually, because everything is coming with double attack. But in the game, instead of knight takes e5, more he played for rook e8. Which is also a possible move, because e4 will be hanging. So, for example, knight f3, we take on e4. And if knight c6, then he wants to take with the d pawn, open the bishop on c8, and recapture the pawn on e4. White play bishop c4. Hoping for black to take on e4. Can we take on e4 in this position? Can we do that? Knight Sounds e4 like here. <laughs> Sounds like we can't. Sounds uh, like we can't. <laughs> if we might just lose the piece. Yeah, something with queen f3, not necessarily uh, queen f3 right away, no? Because I think I can come back, knight f6. Yeah. Maybe we take first and then, or we take on f7, yeah. Yes, uh, that is the idea, that knight e4, bishop f7, I think bishop f7 we can play first. Not sure if there's much of a difference between them. Ah, there is a difference that bishop f7 is more forcing uh, because we are attacking both the king and the rook. So here, black has to take and we bring the king onto a worse position. Now we take on e4. Yeah. And we get our piece back with, uh, with attack. Well, white gets his piece back. <laughs> if rook e4, he has queen f3. So doesn't, that doesn't work. Okay, so no knight e4 yet, but like in this game. Yes, you're going to like this game, I'm sure. It's a beautiful game. <laughs> b5 he plays. Okay, and b5 wants to play b4 and get the pawn back. Uh, get the knight out of there. For example, bishop b3, he goes b4. So he goes, oh, I'm going to show this line because it's uh, actually pretty. b4. Here after b4, knight a4 could be an idea because I'm attacking the bishop on c5 and, well, maybe uh, he can get knight c5 with knight e4. But here, <laughs> bishop g4 again traps the queen. 
unexpectedly. Rook, queen e1, rook e4. Yeah. <laughs> queen is, the queen is trapped again. So, yes, this is a, another cute idea in this position. He played bishop e2, a white. So here Morphe takes on e4. Knight e4, bishop e3, and he goes back to e6 to keep uh, c6 defended. And here I think white can, should actually try to play normal with c3 and get the pieces out, but he plays c3. And this is a bad move. Okay, the idea is good that he wants to play d4, get the center and uh, keep this bishop closed, but it has a big problem. What do we do in this position? Uh, this is Paulson versus Morphy answering a question on YouTube. Is it a move that's uh, like winning good or is it no, just... No, no, like just uh, advantage good. What do you think, Sophie? You're getting a uh, lot of help now. Then? Okay, I'm just gonna go look. Uh, Twenty-three. Yeah, I actually just made that uh, error. I think that's uh, that uh, that's advantage good. <laughs> that's advantage uh, good. Yes. <laughs> we'll have it on switch as well. Uh, that's good. We can agree on that. Queen d three makes sense no? because I don't want d four happening, and this is why I think white should have played d3 here and not c3 because he needs to have d3 uh, covered and maybe then, you know, depending on how black plays, c3 and d4 can of course be an idea. But first d3. Ooh. Now he will have some problems getting the pieces out. He, yes. can still, he can still play rook e1 for example here and kick the queen out of d3 then. No trade rooks, get the queen out. It's a lot of work, but <laughs> yeah, it could work because black also has some problems with the pawns, with the structure. So if the rook is gone, c6 will be hanging. But he goes b4 instead, giving us this beautiful game. Bishop b6 and a4, playing on the queen side. Morphy takes, queen takes, and now he defends. Bishop d7. And in this position, white plays rook a2. Okay, rook a2 is not the best move, but it has, uh, it makes sense. Uh, to understand it, you have to think about what to do with white instead here. How should, I, uh, how should white continue in this position, if not rook a2? Yeah, what that's... Uh, yeah, that's what I was the queen is so nicely placed on d3. Um, But, but is black even, um, like if we move the bishop to maybe uh, b2? Yeah. Maybe not, There's, it's hanging there. If we move the bishop to a3 uh, and black captures on d2, can we not play rook d1 then and win the bishop on d7? Uh, yes, rook a d1, no? I was thinking, yeah. I was wondering if I have, but maybe I don't. If I have bishop f2 still, probably not. But also... Okay, what if bishop a3? Um, maybe we... Two. Yeah. Can we play c5? c5 is an idea, but... Yeah. C5 is an idea definitely after bishop a3 because queen a6, which is an idea uh, that was suggested, is not possible anymore. No, so has to play queen b3 maybe. 
and the queen is still annoying there. Yeah. Uh, see. Yes, I was just checking some answers here. I see that uh, queen a6 was suggested by by many by many people here and bishop a3 we shall take a look at it since it was also suggested i think yes i think c5 but not necessarily c5 doesn't win material no do i win anything do i need to play c5 i can play c5 but what if i just develop like rook e8 that can also be an idea here no what if i go rook e8 in this position what is the bishop doing on a3 uh, I don't know if you can see the board. Can you see it now, Sophie? Yes. Yeah. So I think in this position with rook e8, I am maybe threatening to take on d2 already? Yeah. Because of some rook e1 checks that I might have. And maybe playing c5 also. Maybe playing c5 also, yes since my rook on a8 is not hanging anymore, no? Yeah. Uh, but queen a6 is very strong in this position. Just get the, the queen out of d3. Mm. And I think here white was worried about the, the move queen c2, which is why he played rook a2 first. But uh, here one move could be simply queen c4. And then d4, no? I need to defend the pawn on c3 first. So I can play d4, and queen c4 should do it. It's probably not the only move. Rook a2 uh, might also be an option instead of queen c4. But this was uh, definitely better. I think white is not even worse in that position. Rook a2 allows uh, black to bring all the pieces. You know, and after rook e8, now white is in big trouble. Now he plays queen a6, but queen a6 is already too late. So what do we do here? Mm. Right. <laughs> if this is like a king hunt game, <laughs> I just have to. If we take an f2, he can't take with the rook because of rook e1, and then it's going to be checkmate. Or is it? Yeah, it is, because we take with the rook and f1 when he plays that in between. Um, Sorry, so here rook e1 in this position? No, no, not yet. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at if we can take an f2, and then I'm saying ah. if he captures, okay. then rook here would be checkmate. Yes, that's true. But if he takes with the king, then mm -hmm. I don't want him to go back to d1. Yes, I think. Yes, yeah, so on bishop f2, king f2. I don't know how uh, how we can no. continue after that. No, I think we're gonna. I'm gonna sack too much. Just looking at like then putting a rook here, uh, but it's not really. Then he goes back to d1, and no, I don't see a way to win this. Yeah. And okay, queen f1 I... has a problem because queen takes f1 isn't made, no? <laughs> yeah, and the queen can come back. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Mm, then maybe we should just avoid the queen trade? Yes. Morphe also Pretty... avoided the queen, uh, the queen trade. Um, do you want to go to maybe g6? Nah. Uh, the oh. Twitch chat, yep, clock has it. <laughs> I don't know if you have seen the game or uh, hey, you, uh, you have found it, but... Hey, queen B, how can we... What? 
How can we put a queen on b8? Is it queen b1? No, that was... it's queen f3 here. <laughs> oh, okay, queen f3. Very oh, nice, huh? Yeah, I was not going to, I was not looking at that. Avoiding queen trades, so I just give you my queen. <laughs> Wow. This is a very, very nice sacrifice. Queen f3, and it is mate. Yes, rook g6 and bishop h3 leads to rook g6 here. Okay, uh, Akil also has it on uh, on the YouTube chat. So rook g6, a king h1, and bishop h3. Big, big problems here. Because on rook yeah. g1, okay. You just take yes but on rook g1 uh, akil was suggesting rook e1 but you can just take on g1 i think that makes black's life uh, a lot easier no yeah just take on g1 here we don't need to go fancy with rook e1 but rook g1 will be made after rook e1 that is going to to do it uh he played rook d1 so here we need to find the mate no how is it going to be This seems like a good start. <laughs> Bishop g2, let's start with checks. No? It goes here, goes to g1, and then we take an f3. Has to go to f1. Um, then. What is the material right now? We don't want to know, that would not be good. <laughs> No, it's just a uh, bishop for the queen. Uh, rook g2. To threaten on, on f2. Or. Yeah. But on rook g2, I finally get to play d4, I think. Ah, uh, yeah, and then you're blocking my bishop. Hmm, but rook h2, and with the idea of rook h1 still, no, it's not over. No. So what am I going to do on rook g2 then? Not sure. Maybe I have to give up some material. Rook g2. What can I do here? Looks like I cannot do anything. No? Rook f2 is coming and rook g2. And on d4 that I thought I had, you have rook h2 and rook h1 is still mate. Yeah, and it's hard to uh, defend that. Hard to defend anything. So rook g2 looks like it's also working. Okay, I can try queen b6, but that won't work because rook h2 is still the move, no? Just giving up material won't work. Rook h2 and rook h1. So yes, I would say that rook g2 also wins. Rook g2 uh, gets the job done. He played bishop g2, and here there are two ways uh, to mate. One is bishop e4, and I'm just going to show this because I, th I thought it's very beautiful, very uh, pleasant to the eye, king f1, and here the very, just bishop f5. Just play this with calm. Calm move, bishop f5, but bishop h3 is going to be mate next, no? Yeah. Nothing to do against that. So I found no. this idea very, very beautiful. Uh, in the game, he played bishop h3, which also leads to mate, because now his point is that bishop f2 uh, threatens bishop g2. Well, in fact, this one uh, does not lead to mate. Sorry, queen f1, but it does lead to a huge advantage. Rook e2. And this, this will also do. Rook a1 was played, rook h6. And now rook h2 is coming. So here, uh, here white resigned. But very nice, very nice uh, mating ideas here. No, rook, uh, this rook g2 is also very pretty. Very, very nice. Pretty. A very nice queen sacrifice on f3. Yes, I see people have seen this game. It's a very uh, famous game as well. I thought you might have seen it, but nevertheless, I thought it's too beautiful to not include it today. 
And now I'm going to move on to another game, also against Paulson. And I think this one might be new for you. It's not so, so famous, but it has some, uh, some beautiful ideas. So we're going to see the same opening up to a point. Here he plays d6. And now white goes d4. Takes bishop d7, defends c6, and b takes. Here white plays bishop a4. Bishop c4 was also possible, but we are not here to look too much at the opening. And here queen f6. The point is to follow up with knight e7, castle, and get all the pieces out. What's taking on f2 if uh, white is... Uh... <laughs> yeah, so taking on f2, of course, if white plays bishop b3, no? And then the game is over and <laughs> everything is better. But no, he castles. Castle short and knight e7. And here white plays bishop e3. And this move is uh, not the best here because, okay, what he wants with bishop e3 is to open the f file, no? Because the black king is still in the center. But as we will see, uh, the two pawns are very weak and uh, Morphy exploits this very, very well. In case you thought he's only an attacking player, here you'll see that he has a very strong positional understanding as well. He goes queen h6. Uh, this makes sense to attack e3, queen d3. And this moment is important now. How do we continue with black? I guess we would like to cast it one day. Uh, e5 is also a move. No, we don't want to play d5 because then the pawns uh, get kind of help him with his pawns. Yeah. Uh, so I think I would ca I would prefer just to castle and then the. But that's not really. Yeah, I mean, maybe then after that, putting a knight on g6 and e5, that looks like a good spot for the knight. Um, Maybe the rook can go, one of the rooks can go to B. Uh, yeah, but I really want to have my knight on E5 and, and I want to castle. Uh, so first you want your knight on E5 and then castle or first castle and... I just want to get it done. Sorry, so here what would you play? I, I didn't hear that. I, I, will, I will castle. I will, you'll castle first. Well, here first we have to bring the knight on g6. That's right, Ansel. And let me see what is the YouTube channel thinking here. Knight g6. Castle seems good. Yes, castle seems like the normal thing to do. But what will white play after castles? That's the big question. He will keep us from <laughs> our plan. He will. How? No. So what if we castle here? What can white do? So and he should either guard g6 or uh, e5. Well, Mads and Nadsel and Canard du Futur have, have found it. e5. 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 e5 can be a bit annoying, no? Yeah, yeah, that that's kind of ruining my plan. <laughs> no, not really, because you can still play knight g6, but then instead of uh, having a pawn on e4 and one on e3, you, you'll only have the one on e3. Yeah, it's nice to be in front of the double pawns. Yeah, I mean, here you can still play this way, but now white has e3 and black has d6, so it's not so easy anymore. Let's say rook d1 here, for example. We have to play carefully here. Yeah. So, very important, the move order here. Knight g6 first, because white's idea was to play e5. No? When they have doubled pawns, they want to get rid of them. So Morphy does not allow that. Knight g6 and put a knight on e5 first. Rook e1, knight e5. We take care of that. The king is still safe on e8. Nothing bad is going to happen. And now he castles. <laughs> okay, so good position, no? Nice uh, pawn structure, nice knight on e5, white goes h3, but what to do next? Let's try to brainstorm some ideas. 
What do we do? It's kind of hard because I would normally look at um, if there are any pawn breaks, pawn levers in the position. But if we play both e5 and f5, seem to be helping. Yeah. Uh, right. So I'm not really sure if that's uh, if we can go for that or if we should try to. to do something else, no? Uh, Colin was asking on Twitch if uh, all these games are against Paulson. No, uh, the last two ones were against Paulson. Uh, we have seen various games and I have uh, many other games that we probably won't have time to see. <laughs> If I put my bishop on e6, you would probably have to go e3. Um, or bishop b3. A bishop b3, yeah, maybe. Maybe bishop b3. Rook b8 is another suggestion that I see in the no, chat. That. Um, maybe rook b8 can be played also, yeah, for sure. Or we could try to win the pawns here, obviously. Then we could play with e8 or um, yes, rook e8 can turn. also be an idea. Um, yes. I'm not sure about f5 and d5 moves that uh, I see in the chat because I kind of help white no? whenever I push one of the pawns. The knight on c3 finally gets some squares, and the pawn on e4 is. A weakness that I can uh, keep attacking before pushing anything. Yeah, and but I don't think we can push the bishop yet. Uh, take on h3, yes. not yet, no? f3 is defended. Uh, so. But rook e8 and rook b8, both suggested, can be played. I mean, you can play this slowly and improve uh, the position. But Morphe finds, I think, what I think is a brilliant idea, no? Because white, what can white do? This is a big question as well. Uh, white is kind of tied up. If I push f5 here, I'm going to give him something to do. The rook plays on f1, trade some crooks, maybe put another rook on the f file. The knight maybe can go to e4. Don't know if that helps a lot, but suddenly there is there is something to do for white from this position where he has nothing or not much to do. So here he plays king h8. <laughs> Just a very beautiful, beautiful move, no? Yeah. Knight d1. What do you think he does next? Uh, Morphe? Morphe, yes. <laughs> What is the point of this king h8? Very subtle and mysterious move. Um, do we want to go rook g8 and push the g pawn? We do, yes. We want to push the g, g pawn. Start the attack. Yeah. So here, he goes g5 right away. What are you going to do with white, no? He's just ah, going okay, to play rook g8 <laughs> and g4. I'm not sure if it matters too much. Maybe... I think I can also start with rook g8, no? Whoops. I hope you can still hear me all right. I just got a weird message about my connection. Hope nothing's wrong there. But he goes g5, which is, I think, transposing. Yeah. Knight f2 and rook g8, and we are in the same uh, position where we want to push g4. He goes knight d3 and g4, <laughs> just like that. And suddenly, black has a great attack. I guess he has to know that doesn't really. Does he have to take an e5, or can we then just maybe he can take an, an e5? He took on e5 to... in the game, yes. He took on e5 on e and then took on f7, so let's see that. Pawn takes e5. No, here actually he took on g4, sorry. 
uh, rook takes f7 wouldn't work because uh, then h3 will be hanging. I can play bishop e6, get the bishop out of the threat, and then pawn takes h3. Ooh. It looks very scary. No? Very, very scary. So now pawn takes g4, and bishop takes. And it still is very scary, I would say. The g file is terrible. And this bishop, the bishop on a4 is completely out of play. Yeah. <laughs> Important. <laughs> Very nice that the queen is uh, protecting c6. Yeah. Uh, all the pieces are coordinated here. Queen f2 and rook g6. This is something very nice in Morphe's games, that he coordinates the attack very well. It's not just uh, sacrifice, 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 but he builds on the attack. You'll see this in many of his games, that he brings more pieces and more pieces, and then he sacrifices, and when he starts the attack, it's it's over. Queen f7, and here, okay, black can win in many ways. Uh, rook g8 is probably possible, bishop h3, but he goes bishop e6, asking white, where are you going to go with the queen? And white says, okay, I'm going to take some more pawns. And what do we do now? I, I will. <laughs> we take in g2, I guess, and then queen h3, and he's not, he doesn't have that many moves. No. I mean, it has, but it looks like it's. It looks like rook g2 should do that trick, no? Yeah. Queen h3, and this is going to be mate. Another check here. Rook f8, and there we go. Game over. Yeah. Many a very very nice idea. I, this idea of g five is. Game. Sorry. Is this a blindfold game? Uh, maybe. Let me just oh. check. Yes, this was a blindfold game. A simultaneous game also. <laughs> oh, yeah. He also played simultaneous exhibitions blindfold. That's another great thing about Morphe. And yeah. he. He made these masterpieces. <laughs> Very beautiful yeah. idea here with uh, with G five. I thought this is this is just brilliant. And since we are already kind of running out of time, let me just show you this uh, game that I thought was very impressive, where he plays without a rook. And with this, we are going to finish. Yes, you can see where the black king ended up. <laughs> let me show you how. Um, yeah. So here he's playing white. Yeah, I'm just gonna flip the board. Yep. And let's let's play through it. Um, and he plays, plays this game completely normally, like he would play with equal pieces, bishop c4, and knight g5. Oh, this is all theory. <laughs> yeah. D5. I think, uh, with white, just I also have a rook on a1. But you have a rook on a1, no? <laughs> But that's wrong. I know that's that's not the move when um, if you have rook on a1, maybe it's okay. If, uh, <laughs> maybe it's okay to go like this. Um, yes, but knight d5 here, knight f7 is still uh, with a rook on a1. This is still supposed to be very uh, difficult for to play for black. Mm. Without a rook on a1, um, it should be slightly better at least. <laughs> But Morphe doesn't care. He goes for the sacrifice, still. King d6, knight c3. That's what's called the fried liver attack? Yes, that's, uh, that's the one. So here, uh, on knight c3, he's obviously uh, threatening the knight on d5. And maybe his opponent was very cool about this game, thinking that he's already a rook up, and now he's another piece up. So maybe he didn't really care that much about the material because here he didn't play knight e7, which we know now as uh, theory here. Uh, but he played knight d4. I think he was very confident in his position. And bishop d5. Yeah. King d6 and queen f7. And it's very difficult. Uh, knight e4 is a big threat. Knight e4 is mate, if yeah. allowed. And it's not so easy to meet uh, anyway, because it will happen. Maybe queen e7, uh, probably this should be played, but still is 
Okay, rook up, but the rook is not developed yet. I mean, in the meantime, white is attacking with three pieces. So this still looks scary, I'd say, but maybe here is where white's attack um, is more or less over. There's a knight c5 check, but I think uh, that's it. King d8, and that's the last check. Yeah. And here, no. queens have to be trained here, yeah. So, queen e7 was uh, a better defense, but he goes bishop e6. Which does not look that bad either, because, well, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to force some exchanges. What can be so bad? Well, bishop e6. Knight takes, and here knight e4. And black is suddenly in trouble. I'm going to take the e6 knight in case the king moves away. No? Queen e6. But still, this is the best defense. Bishop d6, and get the pieces out. Very important. But he hangs on to, to the material. He goes king d5. And let's try to find the moves here. How do we play with white? So if he plays c4 now, he can take an e4. But I'm not sure if that's the move you want to. <laughs> king is very much uh, sort of like <laughs> the white part of the board. Mm. I'm just going to look at it briefly, at least. It does look very tempting, no? <laughs> yeah. He probably has to take to get, or maybe even... And since everybody wants to play C4, everybody in the Twitch channel... Um... I want to play C4, so maybe we should just do it then. <laughs> <laughs> play C4. And, but then I'm not sure if I want to take the knight afterwards, or if I want to go queen e Let's see, king e4 was played in the game. And here there's only one move okay. uh, that keeps the attack going very well. Queen f3 here, uh, what happens? King d4, I think, no? Uh, maybe we play d3 so we open up for our bishop. Or he could take he, he could take that with his queen, so that's maybe not so good. Well, here he takes on e six. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Just take some take some material, and uh, queen g four is coming. You want to keep the king in this area. No? Yeah. I want to play queen g four next. <laughs> And uh, here he goes queen, queen d4. And this move is the final mistake because it takes away the d4 square from the king, uh, which was an escape square. And now everything uh, goes bad. We have various ways to win here. What would you play? Sorry about that. Not um, queen g4. He has to go here. This, this checkmate. No, he can go here. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know. Yes, queen g4 is what he played. Uh, we're going to see another idea. That's Again, very pretty, so I'm going to show it. It's king e2. <laughs> Another called move, just preparing the mate. I'm taking away the square d3 from the king, keeping yeah. the king boxed in, and queen g4 is made. This is just a beautiful idea, but queen g4, of course, is also made. Sorry, here, queen g4. King d3, and you are almost there, Sophie. King e2, queen e2, and king c2. And now we get the bishop out, d3. Ah, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, and we castle, we castle. We do. <laughs> and it's made on c1. Just a very beautiful game, no? Pity not to yeah, see it. it and without the rook on a1. So, yes, if you want to, to study morphine in more depth, uh, you can find some uh, amazing ideas. Does f3 work? 
Does F3 work? Let's see. In this position, does F3 work? Um, F3, King D3. I don't know how am I go how am I going to check next. I think F3 here, no? King D3. I don't think it works because now I only have a check on F5 and the king ex escapes on C4. So I think not. Because I don't have a rook on a1 to bring on c1. <laughs> that's, a, that's a problem. Yes. Okay, and I think we are going to end for now. I had many beautiful games prepared, but we only have so much time. Uh, this, which game is this? This is Paul Morphy versus Alonso Morphy. Uh, it was his uh, uncle or... Uh... Uh, I don't know uh, what relative Alonso was to him, but he has an, uh, another game against Ernesto, which was his uncle, I think, which I don't have here, but also ends up in beautiful mate. <laughs> um, there was a question in the, in the YouTube chat, how can I get a, a coach on Chess24? It's on Coaches where you can get a coach. Uh, and uh, if you go to coaches.com, you will find uh, all the premium coaches that coaches has I am one of them and also we have a new feature uh, in, in case you guys are uh, interested uh, there are some master classes this is just the second week that we uh, are doing them uh, which are basically group lessons and we are in my master classes we are looking at pawn structures but there are two more in case you are interested so definitely go check out coaches.com and uh look at them yeah and i can highly recommend both the one-on-one -on -one <laughs> coaching and the master class i was at the last one so i uh, i can vouch for both things thank you sophie yes <laughs> so if there are any more questions uh, we are going to be here for a few more minutes yes the problem with the title is still going on because restream has a bug so we cannot fix that very sorry uh anything else we are going to have this show every tuesday now at the same yeah. hour so what we are going to be doing in case uh, anybody uh missed the introduction we are going to be looking at different players very strong players and see their attacking games not necessarily attacking players just good players we're going to see some games maybe of karpov as well who's not so well known for his attacking games. And are we going to do Morphe again next week or are we moving? Um... No, uh, we are done with Morphe. We're just going to see, to have one stream per player. So. Oh, and if uh, you guys uh, have suggestions, I know Sophie already submitted her requests and I'm going to uh include her players in the list but if you guys want to see any players in particular i'm going to uh, pay attention to your messages as well <laughs> so okay you know who it will be i'll be doing tal tal was my uh <laughs> was my first suggestion and yes i i, I uh, asked for two other uh of my favorite players who uh, will also i think it will also cover yes we will Tal and Petrosian. Interesting. I'll try to find something about Petrosian because he is also mostly known as a, as this very solid player. Let's see if we can uh, we can find something about Petrosian before we get to Magnus, because Magnus will be among the last ones if we take them chronologically. Oh, Nezhmetinov, That's a good suggestion. He has some beautiful games, so that's definitely something that I will. I will annotate an Alekine, which I see. Palga was my second uh, suggestion. Yes, <laughs> so. I have her on the list as well. And the third one is a Danish player. So. And what else? Yes, Alekine was also one of the players that I had uh, in mind. Uh, yeah. A lot for his ability to build the attack. No, he had this games where he suddenly starts attacks about, from nothing. Paul Keres? Okay, I, have, I really have to annotate this while once we are done, because then I will forget. 
So let me just Did your sound disappear? Sorry, no, I'm just being uh, careful, oh, okay. being <laughs> paying a lot of attention here and taking notes. <laughs> so, Keres, Alekai. Wow, we're going to have a long uh, series, I think. <laughs> yeah, lots of uh, great attacking players. Petrosian, yes. Let me just see. Yeah, I think I have them uh, all annotated and I'm going to go through their games, see what we can I'm find. Switch chat actually, maybe I should see if YouTube has any. Uh, yeah, okay, I think you have them. Yes, Alekain and Magnus, yes, we are uh, we are going to get Magnus in the end. Yeah. Probably the, the very last one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, I think we are going to finish with this. Thank you guys very much for watching. Um, uh, I invite you to my masterclass today. There is still time to sign up if you haven't. It will be at 5.30 uh, p.m. Uh, CET, that's Madrid time. And also the Spanish speaker, we're going to continue with the lessons for the participants in the World Chess Schools and we're going to have the usual stream at 8. Oh, and how about Ivanchuk? Good, uh, Good suggestion. How about Ivanchuk? I'm going to annotate that as well. <laughs> thank you guys very much and thank you Sophie very much uh, for being here. So, uh, bye everybody. See